In a market crowded with underdosed and ineffective CBD products, STB Active has made it our mission to cut through the noise and deliver salves and tinctures that will really help you at a fair price. And unlike many others, only full-spectrum CBD extract is used in all of our products, taking full advantage of the entourage effect. In addition, we use a proprietary terpene blend to naturally maximize results. Both our Relief Salve and Soothe Roll-On Topicals are made with less than 10 USDA organic ingredients, contain an industry-leading 1,000 mg of CBD per ounce, and provide immediate and long-lasting relief for the aches and pains that come with an active lifestyle. All STB Active products are made in-house and third-party tested using strict cannabis industry standards. Discover how you can find the balance and relief you need. And see for yourself why STB Active is simply the best at stbactive.com. From the Pod Connect Studios, high in the Rockies, at the beautiful Beaver Creek Resort, this is a special cannabis crowdfunding episode of the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. Today on Raising Cannabis Capital, we are continuing our cannabis crowdfunding series with Justin Renfro from WeFunder. Justin, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm glad you could be with us today because we get so many questions about crowdfunding. But I think it's important before I start, I like to always remind our audience that many of the same rules that govern banking also govern crowdfunding. So not every cannabis company is eligible, but there's still opportunity for ancillary cannabis businesses and CBD companies to get involved with crowdfunding to the best of my understanding. Justin, is that still the policy with WeFunder? Yeah, you nailed it. That's it right there. Okay. Those naggy... Federal government laws are just screwing everything up, even with crowdfunding. It's really frustrating. It is. We're going through a revolution. The roaring 20s are upon us. So these antiquated laws will go away sooner than later. I hope you're right. I hope you're right, because it's getting old fast. That's for sure. I thought we'd talk about both the process for new companies and process for investors and maybe start off with companies who want to do a crowdfunding campaign on WeFunder. Can you walk us through the process? Yeah, for sure. We work with all types of companies. We've got a broad range. So if you're on the tech side, if you're on the manu- actually the manufacturing side is the one side that doesn't really work, but pretty much any of those different kind of channels around the flower, or if you're a CBD company, that's totally cool, can qualify and raise capital. Businesses need to raise capital, and we want to be an open platform that hosts and allows companies to do so. It's relatively simple. There's kind of two main buckets that need to be checked in order to launch a campaign. The first is you have to put a campaign page together. So you have a pitch video, you have your pitch deck, you have bullet points around the investment, what you're raising capital for, the traction to date, try and make your case for why this is a solid investment. You can go on the WeFunder Explorer page and you can see all the different pitches and all the different types of companies that are using equity crowdfunding and get a feel for the marketing and the campaign management, how it looks and how it's presented to investors. The second bucket is the financial and legal side of the equation. And that's a big part of the process where we have to file a Form C with the SEC to allow companies to raise capital from accredited and unaccredited investor. So that's really what equity crowdfunding is, is being able to publicly solicit an investment in your private company and accept investments from anybody in the world that want to invest in what you're building. So that Form C is the form that gets filed with the SEC, and that requires a couple of things. The first is the investment contract. So you need an investment contract. Most companies are raising on a convertible note or a safe. That's the typical instrument. We also do some debt offerings, so there's some interesting dialogue there, but we'll stick to equity for now. Okay. So you, you need your investment contract. You need 2019-2020 reviewed financials from a CPA. 
And then there's a bunch of legal disclosure questions that are required to launch. So our team orchestrates the back end and makes sure everything is dialed on the compliance and legal side. And you take charge of the campaign page and presenting your case. When that's done, you have a link, a single URL that you can share and anybody can then invest in your company. It seems pretty easy. I've heard that it's important to create some pre-launch momentum, like lining up investors before you start your campaign. Do you find that helpful? Yeah. So our company has a $50,000 minimum. Anybody that's really evaluating equity crowdfunding, and I think this is best practice across the board, should have a real business where raising 50000 from your own network is possible. You have investors, whether that be friends and family earlier on or legitimate investors later on, you should be able to fill that pot and raise a minimum of 50000 Otherwise, it's an all or nothing proposition to that mark. Mm-hmm. Then anything beyond 50000 It's important to have those early investors to come in because the more money you raise, the more promotion and exposure you get to our audience of investors. So at the end of the day, you're generally looking at a third of the capital coming from WeFunder investors, two thirds of the capital coming from the founder and their efforts to market the fundraise. Generally speaking, a founder should be able to easily raise 50K from their efforts in order to seriously explore this as an option. Okay. That makes sense because if you're going to do this, you want to make sure you can at least raise 50 on your own. So I think that makes a lot of sense. I want to talk a little bit about advertising. I'm always a little bit confused as to how much can you promote your campaign? Well, part of the Form C filing process allows for public solicitation. So you can send and market it however you would like. There are certain guidelines around it, but more or less, you can broadcast this out to the universe. There's a couple of interesting pieces around the marketing end of running a campaign. The first is one of the coolest pieces to equity crowdfunding is that anybody can invest. So let's say you have a retail store. And you can get your customers to invest in your round. You can convert new customers to be investors or existing customers to be investors and new investors will then be customers. So there's an interesting dynamic from a marketing perspective as to, hey, we have more pools to fish out of in terms of bringing investors into the mix. This is a big open door. So there's a lot of creativity from a marketing perspective. A very tangible example that a lot of companies utilize is paid media. So they will run Facebook ads to broadcast their offering out to the world and bring in new investors. Let's say you spend $10,000 on ads to promote it to investors. Is the return on that $10,000, $100,000 in investments? If so, that's a really compelling value that you can get where it's like, hey, this is great for marketing and we're seeing a great return on this investment from paying for media to go reach investors. That's a common strategy, but it's really about you're piecing it together. I'm out talking to real investors. I've got customers and, and, and people around my business that might be interested in investing. I've got friends and family. I've got WeFunders community of investors. So you're fishing from a broad range of different buckets bringing in investors and trying to create this snowball effect where it's like, hey, this has momentum. This is exciting. This is cool. This is interesting. Lots of different ways that you can play that. What I really love about the whole process is that every one of these investors really become a customer, or at least they're rooting for your success. So everybody that's joined the crowdfunding campaign now wants you to succeed, which is what can be better than that? A good practical example is we have 5,000 investors in WeFunder that have funded our company to date. And right now we're trying really hard to hire software engineers. That's a big focus for us as a company is to hire software engineers and build a stronger infrastructure. And we're promoting that to our 5,000 investors saying, hey, do you know any software engineers? Help us hire. These are the positions we're hiring for. Hiring is our number one focus as a company. And we have 5,000 people that we can try and get help. Connect us to your networks. Connect us to your friends. We need to hire people. 
Man, that's a great asset to have with your company. Now, before we wrap things up, I want to talk just briefly about investors. I know a lot of campaigns that I've said, and you mentioned this earlier, investors who will get convertible notes or a safe. Can you explain how that works? Yeah, I would encourage everyone to just go tease it out. Go find a company that's fundraising on WeFunder and invest $100 and experience that opportunity to invest in a company and invest in an entrepreneur, invest in a dream and be a stakeholder in that business. I think that's why it's so cool is anybody can do that for $100. The practical execution is that you make an investment in a company, you get an investment contract. You are an equity holder of that company. Now, there's certain nuances around the differences between a safe or a convertible note. But I think the most important thing to understand is you can actually go and invest and be an equity holder in a company and participate in that potential upside. These are big bets, especially early stage investing. You shouldn't be putting it all in in the tank, but you can make strategic bets in entrepreneurs that you really believe in. And if they get acquired or if they exit, if they have an IPO, you get in early and, and access that upside. And that's what investing is all about. It sure is, especially the early investors. We'll, we'll have Justin's and WeFunders info in the show notes. So if you're considering raising money or looking for a company to invest in, check out the website. Please make sure you read everything and understand everything before you invest. But like Justin said, check it out. Just try it because you never know. You, you might catch a tiger by the tail. Justin, thanks for being on the show today. I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. Fearless.